Bamboo has numerous qualities, but the most important is that it grows incredibly fast, from 30 centimeters to one meter a day. The village is magnificent, set amongst the mountains, with all its bamboo houses. Have the Adi always built like this? We've always built houses in the way we know how. Sometimes to a T-shaped plan and sometimes to an L-shaped plan, but always according to our tradition. Yes, I noticed there were two types of houses here. One, where the houses have a kind of substructure filled with branches, and another, where the house stands on small plates. That's right, two types of house, the one we live in and the one where we store grain and rice, which is raised. We fix the plates to protect it from rats and snakes. It stops them from climbing up. But have the Adi always used bamboo to build their homes? Construction has always been done with bamboo because it's easy to transport and assemble. And when people get old, they can't carry wood anymore, so it's much easier to use bamboo. Is the survival of the Adi really linked to this natural environment? Yes. Without this natural resource, our people wouldn't be able to survive. We'd have nowhere to live. Ghani Zaman is one of a generation of Indian architects who wants to combine local traditions with the techniques of modern engineering. A renowned specialist, he has dedicated his life to bamboo. He visits the Adi to learn more and swap knowledge with the people who, since learning how to walk, live for and with bamboo. <laughs> so the house you're building will be just like this one. All the houses are the same, right? For how many years will they be inhabitable? Five, six. Five, six. Seven, seven years. Six. Six. Six, okay, okay. Ghani has recently designed a roofing system and has come to seek advice about its reliability from the inhabitants of Pongin. The rain will come in here and go out there. It won't leak inside into the house. And if ever a piece of bamboo breaks, you just have to replace it. Whereas with leaf roofs, the slightest leak and you'll have to change the whole roof. If you use this roofing, it will really be practical for you. And you'll have a lot less effort to make. Do you think this technique could be good if you used it in your village? Yes, it's very interesting. It looks like a very good alternative. We won't have to change the leaves and we'd save a lot of time. Plus, it'll last much longer. Sure. In Pongin, everyone is curious to discover new techniques and ready to share their know-how. Around the village, there aren't vast bamboo forests, just small plots. But they meet the needs of all the inhabitants and allow them to be self-sufficient. For the Adi, Everything is a machete's length away. A new house needs to be built. All the men join in. I accompany them to a bamboo plantation on the edge of the village.
Bonnie, how do you pick which bamboos to cut? If we cut them during the full moon, it's no good. Because that's when they have the highest quantity of sugar, and that attracts insects. So we wait until the third day after the full moon before cutting them. Do you want to try cutting one? Sure, I'd love to. Hey. Okay. Let's go. The machete's really sharp. I'm not very accurate. I'm chopping everywhere. It's not easy. Almost there. No, um, chop at this angle. Like this? Backhand. I thought it was the age of the bamboo that mattered. You can't cut bamboo before it's two years old. We can tell its age from its bark. Look at this one. It's smooth and clean. So it's a baby bamboo. On the older plants, you can see black marks. As they grow, the bark becomes rougher. To build a house, how many bamboos like this do you need? Because they're really big. We estimate the number of bamboo plants we need instinctively. So, first and foremost, I listen to my heart. But I do know that for a small house, you need about 50. To build a large house, you need about 100. Okay, here we go. Let's make it fall. Thanks. All right, it's not exactly the same. You need to get the hang of it. I chop any which way. <laughs> Wow. <laughs>